stopping that one. I want it. As the year goes on, I get closer and closer to learn new skills and to build new acumen. If we can always touch, it's not. When you get that, then you get a lot more excited about being around children. Normal, in a sense, and with all of the changes of course. Or how you can transform your own business. I'm developing the whole time, social, emotion. Traditional route of teaching young people. How to set boundaries because this little victim here needs to know how to do very well. So they use that term. Sometimes expand on them to go up to 40 minutes. All of those things in education, of course those things are important. Student is going to our heads and our lungs. The affirmations in the mirror for about two minutes. What did you do in order to get yourself going? This is amazing. It happens, what seems to happen quite a bit in our school. For the families to come and they, uh, is that really for the child or is it for us, for the parent? And doing new things for our brain. Who's orchestrating everything in this universe? Which parts of the brain uh, are used on that map that we have. See you with your smiling face. At all, thank you very much for allowing me to join you. Namaste to you, my friends. everyone. You like that video, Jim? I love it. How inspiring. It's wonderful. Um, we're so glad to now have you part of that family. Hi, this is Mare from Music with Mare. And I am here today without my partner at Tool. Um, but we miss him and we yes. wish him well and are sending him lots and lots of hugs. Well, who I do have with me is Jim Mare. So Jim, say hi, and then I'm going to tell him about you a little bit. Hello, everybody. It's so good to be here with you. And, and Jim is coming to us from Boston, Massachusetts, USA today. And I'm down all the way the southern end of that side of the country in Florida. So uh, we're, we're in the same country, but pretty far apart. <laughs> Jim Meyer is inspiring a movement to nurture a generation of young children who will not only embrace individuality and acceptance, but celebrate it through I am for you learning. Jim co-presented a workshop at Harvard on impacting communities with art. His personal and collective psychological and spiritual work has been a driving force since his teens. His parents taught him the joy of service and music as missionaries in India. I am for you embodies both of those joys. Distinguished as the longtime bass player for Jimmy Buffett's Coral Reefer Band, there we go, um, Margaritaville, 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jim is an award-winning children's songwriter that doesn't sing about margaritas with children. So exactly. has presented at national conferences and has spread joy with musical events and workshops for over 50,000 children and their educators in the United States and Europe. Welcome, Jim. You're a busy man. I'm a busy man and I'm so grateful uh, Mayor, for your work and and a tool, and I'm so grateful for everyone watching, uh, or who will watch this, who cares about children. Um, they are our future. So yes, they are, and we actually right before we get started, let me see here. We have a few people that have commented already, and one of them is Helen Moscato from Jersey. Hello. Say hi, Helen. <laughs> and we have Liz from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Um, Hello, Liz. I'm not sure who this is saying hi to me, but hi, <laughs> and another one there. So we have uh, we have Wonderful. some people already watching here. So um, let's get let's jump in with your saying. What is I am for you, and what inspired you to start that program? Yeah. So I'm for you is a social emotional learning platform, and what we do is we translate complex psychological concepts that are essential for children's healthy growth, but we translate them into fun songs and stories uh, and activities that they love to do. So what we do is we facilitate uh, and accelerate teaching uh, with tools and we make it fun to talk about the tough stuff. And, and how, like what are some yeah. of the tough stuff you talk about? Great, okay, so real common. Um, Research shows that one of the largest preventers of both bullying and even as awful as it sounds, it is a reality, childhood suicide, uh, is talking about it, sharing, getting out of isolation. There are several aspects to that. The first one is simply asking for help and understanding that we need to identify key supports in our community. And the little children at a very young age can learn to be a friend to themselves and be a friend to others. And this is a very simple concept um, that we introduce to kids and then we reinforce through fun songs. So here's a real simple example. Right. Kids often feel lonely, alienated, out of touch. They're not sure how to express themselves or how to extend or invite welcome to others that maybe look different than they do or are new to them. We have a fun song called The Lonely Broccoli. And it's lonely a lonely broccoli. Yeah. And I'll sing a little bit for you. Well, I'm a lonely broccoli. Bump, bump, bump. Without all my friends. Bump, bump, bump. I don't know why I'm by myself again. Right. Ooh. And so we introduced this song and a story about a lonely broccoli that's left out of the salad. And it oh. doesn't know why right? And so it's in the refrigerator by its lonesome singing the blues. Now, <laughs> then we tie in a puppet skit. We have two puppets, Sammy and Martin. We're going to have many more, but we're just starting with two. One of them is very well-educated and well-read, and the other loves to play in the mud. And so they <laughs> help us look at things from a scientific or an artistic perspective. And one of the puppets is left out uh, on the playground, and it's very sad. And the other puppet points out that maybe the broccoli feels lonely. Now, this simple thing, right, that's kind of playful, for little kids, this is very real. And this acts as a seed that gets planted into their mind, and they take ownership of it. It becomes their story, not our story. So we invite them to see where they are in that story. And what we've seen is wonderful. We've seen two sides and I'm sure there'll be many more sides revealed. Uh, the two sides are the really confident kids decide, we've seen this where they choose on their own to go look for the lonely broccolis and ask them if they wanna join in their game. We've also seen very shy children learn after a couple of weeks that they now have language where they can say, um, I feel like a lonely broccoli today. <laughs> and the confident kids will run over to them and hug them and say, well, we don't want you to feel like a lonely broccoli. So that's a simple example of how we translate. Rather than talking about inclusion or exclusion, we make it a fun song, a fun story 
Then Ellen Booth Church, my co-founder and co-author, has made beautiful art activities and playful games that the children do together uh, to help expand that experience for them. I was, I was, I was so, so glad, glad you mentioned her. her. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was just, just going to ask, ask about her. About her. Um, so I'm glad you mentioned her. Um, you have an Andrea Blanco saying hi to you. Andrea, yeah, my dear friend, and she works with a lot of kids in the autism spectrum, and oh. Andrea, is, uh, she's a hero of mine. And is she uh, national, or where is she from? She's from Pennsylvania, and she's been, uh, I, I have a lot of dear teacher friends who are advisors, counselors, friends that I talk stuff out, because I'm an artist, I'm a musician, I don't have a EDU degree, and uh, but I've got all these ideas, and my heart is like a child. So uh, for some reason, a part of my brain, as probably for you too, Mayor, uh, relates to how a four or five year old thinks, how a how a three year old, what's going on, and uh, but I need the professional uh, pedagogy and input of professional educators who can help hone that and apply that to realistic educational settings. And so Andrea is a dear friend. Yeah. Did you see, can you read what she wrote to you? Here, I'll put on my glasses. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And Andrea has actually taken some of these. I hope it's okay, Andrea, if I tell a story about, uh, it, this is a very safe story. So it's just a very simple example of how these things can work. Because uh, Mayor, one of the things I appreciate about you is, uh, is how you, uh, work with music and all the healing it does for the brain. And what I get excited about is children make initiative. A wonderful story where her uh, 10 year old daughter had been listening to I'm For You Learning Music and, and uh, my music for a long time. And we, they had explored it and, and her daughter was feeling very frustrated. And I actually have a song called I'm Mad Cause I Wanna Be Mad. Right, it gives expression about that anger feeling, but it also points out I'm choosing to be mad right now. Right, that's like a, but it's this get out the inner your energy, and apparently her ten year old daughter was just having a rough spot like we all do, and said I I just need to go upstairs and dance because that's the solution <laughs> in the song is if you're mad dance about it, and so I just need to go upstairs and dance for ten minutes <laughs> with this I'm mad song. That's just, excellent. That's excellent. I love that. And, yeah. and we know, you know, that I'm into the brain research and brain research shows that if you get some physical aerobic activities for, you know, just take four minutes and jump around, it changes everything. Afterwards, your brain actually makes adjustments. So, wow. you know, so glad to hear that story. It's a wonderful thing. So how did you wind up going from now? You're in Jimmy Buffett's band. You're out playing all this great you know, music. And all of a sudden you're like, you know, I need to do something for children. Well, it's it was a progression. And for those of you who are not in the USA, Jimmy Buffett is very famous here. He's not necessarily famous globally. We've played in Europe a little bit, but we play large, like Fenway Park, large stadiums. Uh, 30,000, 40,000 people here. And, and he's a wonderful man to work for. And he has a real spirit of fun and party, playful. It's a very playful atmosphere. What I tell people is my brain is a Chia pet. And I don't know if the <laughs> listeners know what a Chia pet is, but a Chia pet is that little silly thing where you water it and and all these, these things start growing out of it. Well, that's, and really, I believe all of our brains in some way are like that. But I uh, just... I translate life into songs. I don't know why my brain just does this. And so um, I just translate life into songs. So I come from a huge family, over 25 nieces and nephews. And when they were younger, many years back, um, they I, I would sing songs to them for fun. And But I also tend to forget what I sing when I sing it because my whole brain is creating. It's not okay. remembering. I got so you. A, month, a month later, they would come back and they would sing me a song and I would be like, where did you, what, what song is that? They're like, you did it, Uncle Jim, you did it. Um, so I'm like, you know, that's a pretty good song. <laughs> I really should you know, I'm gonna write good that job, down. Me. Good job. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And so I, just for fun, put out a CD. Back then I called myself Uncle Jim. Now I'm just going by Jim Mayer and I'm free learning. But I put out a CD for fun. I gave it to a friend at Satellite Radio. Uh, back then it was XM. And within five weeks, I was in 
what we call heavy rotation on Satellite Kids Channel. Um, within about 10 weeks, I had a number one nationwide hit with a song called Funky As a Diaper. Uh, Funky as a diaper. And it was just this, it's a spoof rap song about uh, a little I've baby. I've heard that one. You've heard the one, right. And there's, and, and so um, then I won Best New Kids Artist of the Year that year. And I was just dumbfounded. And so a teacher friend said, you know, Jim, um, people tour schools and play for kids. You should visit our school. And so I, over the years, incredible teachers, um, Nanette Leek, uh, uh, Kathy Rubel in Florida, teachers would start playing my music in the class and I would start visiting schools. And everywhere I went, the kids were loving the music. And I'm like, well, this is fun. So I asked teachers, what do you need help with? Because they're listening to me. We might as well work together. And I just love playing for kids. And so um, my first assignment was dental hygiene. That was kind of funny that the kids needed some help with their teeth. But I kept asking and almost every teacher said, uh, social emotional learning. Kids yeah. are, they don't know how to handle how they feel. There's aggression, there's bullying. And I did notice, because I've toured for years, each year I toured, those problems seem to get younger and younger and younger. It used to be sad, grade, right? right? And then sixth grade, and then third grade, and then kindergarten. These kids were really needing help. And so uh, I started, I had this idea, well, why don't I take my most popular songs, that and I, I was raised in a family that we can't help but look at the larger philosophical questions. So that just kind of fuses what I do, right? And so I thought, why don't I take the most popular songs and I'll connect those to positive uh, things that kids work on, character traits. And uh, and I luckily finally met Ellen Booth Church because uh, many educators, there was actually some really comical things where I would send uh, my videos and... <laughs> I would get these emails back because I didn't know how to write a lesson, right? I'm not an educator. So they would say, well, uh, my my three-year-old can't pull themselves away from the TV and watching your videos, but we're not sure what Lonely Broccoli has to do with inclusion and exclusion or bullying. Or <laughs> you know, I was like, well, can't you see it's the Lonely Broccoli? He's like, yeah, like why don't you get it? Right. I was like, why don't you get it? But they didn't get it. And so... I shared it when I met Ellen Booth Church, I just said all of this and she said, I get it. And I can create classroom activities that will help young children experience what you're describing in the songs. And so Ellen was my entry into the early childhood in the first year. There's a large national conference here in the U.S. Uh, called the National Association Educators for the for Young Children. I always mess up N-A-E-Y-C right, for the education of young children. And the first time I went to that conference, there's like thousands of teachers there. That's where I met you. And I thought I had been dropped into this new planet. And I'm like, this is my home. <laughs> These are my, <laughs> my, the teachers. Peeps, my peeps are here. These are my peeps, yeah. So anyway, um, I love I wanna it. Take, I wanna take, if I'm, if I mean, I, um, Kathleen Friend, first of all, said that she's a Chia Pet fan too. But um, we have some comments here. So oh. Kathleen, uh, you would love Kathleen. She has a wonderful book about the greatness chair that mm. um, it, it's wonderful. And Kathleen's going to be on in a few weeks because she just released her second greatness chair book. But um, she's a child psychiatrist that is a really great musician as well. I also spontaneously write and sing songs, but don't remember them unless I record them on my phone. <laughs> And uh, Andrea is saying, I am for you is so comprehensive. It's easy for us teachers to just go ahead and implement them with little prep time. Thank Kathleen you. Kathleen is on again saying, lonely broccoli, love it. Your energy is infectious. <laughs> so um, I, I'm funny. sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted you to know that there are people listening and, and responding Um what are some of the other, I think this is great. What teachers need yeah. and would appreciate from this global group is um, what kind of lesson plans um, mm -hmm. yeah. and how could they contact you to get the yeah. I am for you program. Mm -hmm. I know that you and I, before we came on, we were talking about how COVID has affected us, oh, gosh. Um, oh, yeah. you know, and changed things. Like Ellen's, mm -hmm. 
uh, Helen Moscato saying that you just presented at mm -hmm. New Jersey A EYC and was loved by everyone. Yes. And yeah. next year I told Helen that you and I are going to bookend keynotes there. So I don't know, Helen, we should make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well um, go ahead. Mayor, can I uh, respond to your first, uh, I, I, I love what you shared and I, and I want to just take each of those at, at one time, what, how we can get connected, what we can do together. This is very important that to understand that I'm for you learning started as a dialogue. It started as a question from an artist to educators. How can I help you, right? How can I help accelerate, facilitate, enhance, support your good work? Because there's so many good people who are doing great work with kids. And what we now see is that I'm for you sits at the crossroads of behavioral health, entertainment, and education. Yes. We're all three of those things. And what I want to really uh, stress to the listeners is that that dialogue continues. We continue to create and revise what we're doing, and we want to learn and hear what's working for you. What are challenges that's just hard to get unstuck? Um, and the way people can connect is, and I don't know if we can put this link in the chat, but there's, yes, um, yeah, I, there's an I'm for you learning.com. And it's just real simple. The letter I, the letter M, the number four, the letter you like I'm for you learning.com. And there's a contact button on there. And what we're doing is we're working on streamlining our continual dedication is to make, because we understand how educators, we're all so stressed for time, right? We, we stretched for time. Oh, yeah. We have hardly any time. And so our continual focus is to make things easier and easier to get started, to get uptake. And so we're working on a new pilot that we're going to be rolling out in, I'll say Q1, first quarter of 2022. And we're looking for lab learning schools that we, oh. can, we can share with uh, and that they they will be able to sh you know share their feedback, what's working, what's not. Gosh, it would be great if you had something about this. We really want to take this more to the streets. And I'm so grateful that in Boston, I've met, we have a new CEO who's just amazing. I've met incredible people. We're working, um, going to be working with Dr. Jean Baresson at the Clay Center for Healthy Young Minds at Mass General Hospital. Well, so we're really connecting to psychologists, psychiatrists, um, anyone who's in that circle, right? Circle of trust that cares for kids. Um, and I, I have other examples I can share uh, with fun songs, you know, if you'd like. But I, I just said a lot and I talk a lot. So. No, no, I, that, <laughs> we need you to do that. People need to hear this. And I really, I think, you know, like maybe it would bring things kind of full circle for you. But uh, Atul has 150 WOW preschools in India. Oh Wouldn't my it goodness. be great to have Atul and Preeti be one of the pilot schools for you out there because you are right on target and I I miss having him with us today um, because I could just see him his face right now how excited he would be about that possibility and then as I said bring in full circle to go back to um, where you began your missionary work in India um, Kathleen Friend is saying I am a child psychiatrist if you want to connect with me, your your vision resonates. Um, Kathleen, again, yeah. this is the doctor that wrote the Greatness Chair books. Yeah. And yeah, perfect, perfect can, can alignment. Connect with us, you. Mayor? Yeah, please do. I would love to see your books. And and I'm I'm learning like all <laughs> I'm learning like everybody. And it, I'm just loving to see how other people approach this stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, and that's what's so great about this group, and one of the reasons why. I invited you to join us because I thought here's a great missing piece um, to get a, a, a fun way with the music to do what you do. And um, I would love for you to share like, well, particulars. Like I would love for some of the teachers that are watching, mm -hmm. uh, is there an issue you're having that you would like to say, hey, Jim, how do you address this? Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, a lot of the teachers have been writing about what do we do about talking to the children about COVID? 
like kids are coming back to school and wow. do they feel safe? You know, what's going on in their homes? You know, we have some parents that are just like, ah, don't worry about it. And then we have some parents that are the other extreme. And then the people, the middle of the road, children have questions. Yeah. Wow. Well, that is, that is a beautiful and a big question that's, that's, uh, that needs addressing. And I think to really thoughtfully address it, I'll, I'll share our current approach with everything that's social emotional. And, and uh, yes, we, we have, I feel like it really does boil down to be a friend to yourself and be a friend to others. And you're, you said something very powerful here that, that kind of triggered a thought in my mind, which is what is, where is our common ground with COVID, right? What, what do we share mm -hmm. about this? Um, one of the, uh, because our time is short, we don't have a lot of time to get into it. But one of the things that I'm for you also offers is a larger uh, kind of a humanistic frame framework of friendship principles that are very simple. They're more like observations, like we all are connected. Now, yes. isn't it strange that we've learned, I almost drove my car off the road when I heard Dr. Anthony Fauci say, we all are interconnected. That was the, that's principle number one of I'm for you. Uh, we just say it simpler, we all are connected. And COVID has shown us that two people coming from China who happen, to, they've shown us the negative example of that, right? That the COVID has shown us the negative example. But the fact is, is that each of us has the power to change the world. Now, how do we find our common ground? How do we find what we share? The essentials of being a friend to ourselves and each other are listening and talking. That's where everything starts. Absolutely. If we're not listening, we're not, we, we can't begin to find out what we share. So we start with a very simple song that's called With My Friends. And I'll sing just a little bit for you right now. Please. I'm a friend, I'm a friend with you, a friend with me, a friend with the grass and a friend with the tree. Oh, life is so much better with my friends. I'm a friend with the dog, a friend with the cat. And when it's cold, I'm friends with my hat. Life is so much better with my friends. Now that opens the door for us to ask. Thank you. <laughs> How can I? I'm going to get one of those earworms. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll share the link with you. I'll send you the link um, well, with this little actually, music video. With uh, you actually conversion. can post it in the feed of this video. The video will is is playing live right now on Facebook, and you can go on after we're done and put in the link. I would and love then to. People will know how to find it. Um, Andrea and Dr. Kathleen are, are very, very busy here commenting. Helen, Kathleen, and Andrea are uh, really loving this. Um, Andrea is saying, one of the things that I Am For You has been brilliant at, Jim, you may share, is helping with my kids cope with trauma. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this is the deep water, and it's the deep water that we're all a part of. Yeah, uh, I think it's something like 20 percent. And forgive me, I'm, I'm not great with statistics, but I know a significant percentage of Boston public school kids are have experienced trauma of some sort. This is a new reality that we're dealing with. Now, one of the things that Ellen Booth Church and I came about kind of stumbled on or, or realized while we were working together is this simple notion that presence is transformative. These are three very important words. Presence is transformative. Now, I don't know about you all, but when I'm having a hard day and trauma is the extreme of a hard day, and it's can sometimes in some cases continual, it goes on for long term. Sometimes I need alone time, but the way I perceive alone time is that I'm being present for myself, right? I'm being present for my heart. That's a simple way to be a friend with myself. Sometimes I just need to be still because I don't even know what I'm thinking and I'm not sure what I'm feeling. 
So when I allow stillness, I can be present for myself and connect with my breath, but also I need others to be present for me. And I used to have a dear old friend in St. Louis, God rest his soul, Henry. And he used to say, when I was going through a rough time, he's, he would used to say, Jim, if you're a mess, just be a mess. And he allowed me the freedom to be a mess. And he was safe and didn't judge that I didn't have the answers. He didn't judge that I didn't know how to handle all my feelings. He just accepted that I was a mess. Now that becomes the starting place of where we begin to be present for each other and we can look and be with each other and listen. And that, just that alone, right? Before we get to all the cool stuff, that alone, and I'm sure there's research that you probably know of, Mayor, that that presence when we're with somebody, it actually changes us. Suddenly we're seen and suddenly we start to see that we're part of something bigger than ourselves. And that is the joy of community. That's what we love and what we want to share with kids. And that, yes, I, I, I do know research on that. And Dr. Kathleen is commenting now about presence and holding space with your heart is making a safe container for a child to rest into. Yes, and that's why you and she do have to connect. But we do know, like, there was a study that was done at Harvard, going back to something you said about all the children that have experienced trauma. Mm -hmm. um, but they are finding that more and more children that are under the age of eight have anxiety, depression, mm. are angry. These are like things that we used to think of as adult problems, but now the kids have them. Mm. And Harvard linked it to um, the, the fact that we've stopped letting children just be children. We schedule them for everything. We structure everything. We don't let them go out and play. Why do you think children are so anxious? One of the things that happens, um, let me bring us both up on here for a second, okay, is please. that um, children, they get, okay, go outside, but stay this close to the house. Don't talk to anybody. Don't pick anything up. Don't touch stuff. You're outside, you're supposed to be outside having fun, but instead you're thinking about all the things that could possibly go wrong. And then they wonder why children have anxiety. Um, also overscheduling, um, overscheduling with that they get told, this is your day, we're gonna do this from 10.15 to 10.30, you will have your snack. And at 11, you're gonna to go to soccer practice. And then this child becomes a teenager and the yeah. scheduling kind of stops. And then that child's like, what do I do with my time? And along comes a game that says, I've got something you could do. And they wonder why, you know, I know I'm deviating a little bit here, but no, you just got my head spinning. This is what happens. Yeah. And um, yeah. so the attention, the presence, research has shown if you give children 15 minutes, 15 minutes of undivided attention, or as you may call it, presence, it reduces oppositional behavior by 50%. Wow. Wow. What? Wait. Oh, finger squint. So, you know, give that to children. Um, we have Holly Alyssa Bruno checking in here. I'm thinking you probably know Holly. She said children from birth can Ooh. be traumatized. Wow. And she is a trauma expert. Um, I'm glad that we have her. Yeah. But unfortunately, she's a trauma expert by way of um, living through trauma. So, mm. but she says, my challenge as an educator and human is to see, yeah. hear, respect, and honor each child as a precious human being. Yeah. And Andrea just keeps typing in, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, let's see, somebody else had something here. Um, Kathleen, Mayor, you are so right. Children need a chance to expand their experience without so much fear. So, which brings us to next steps, Jim, how do we make all this happen? Mm. Right, well, to me, the, the, the question is, where are safe areas where the kids can be free to expand and explore? And the key areas uh, with COVID, it's been more the home, and, and now luckily lots of, you know, and, and over the last 
several months, kids are going back into school. Uh, but I think part of what happened with, with COVID that was so challenging is that parents were not, they weren't actually sure what to do with their kids. Exactly. How do I relate to my kids? What do I, even basics of what's appropriate for a three-year-old, right? What's appropriate for a five-year-old? Uh, that's, we, we hope to, you know, start providing more of that. There have been many companies and books and people that, that offer that information, right? Even from years back, Ellen used to write for scholastic books about what's appropriate for a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, so that we can understand this better. And the challenge is to me is always making these things consumable and accessible for parents so that they can find out what, how do I relate to it? Right. But to me, the, the, the first thing, I love that phrase, that a safe container, um, uh, an intentional container, right? And, and uh, Ellen and I, we had a funny situation where we wrote that in one of our lessons and a teacher said, safe container, do you mean they stand in a bucket or we put a rope around them? <laughs> We had to explain it. It was a conceptual container. It was a, we were using our minds to create a container of attention and intention. Um, but but to me, uh, that it starts with a safe place and it starts with caregivers who are appropriately informed, even of the basics. And I think there's another piece to this that that, you know, I totally welcome support on and thoughts about. But I think the, the <laughs> one of the greatest challenges that I've been amazed at so many moms, so many parents, so many teachers that give, 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 all day, give, 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 way beyond what I could do, right? I have super intense energy and then I just, you know, I'm a I'm an artist, right? So I create and perform, but we're talking about thousands, if not millions of caregivers who have to be there for the kids. And so one of the things that I'm looking at, because you can't give what you don't have, so if you haven't been present for yourself, then how can you be present for somebody else without at some point just going cuckoo, right? And so that's another thing that we're looking at is just giving um, adults, you know, and Ellen's helping with me with that, Helen, Andrea, uh, and all these new friends that I hope to meet soon, grounded in reality of how do we care for ourselves as caregivers? And, and I think that uh, people like you, Mayor, and people like me who are creating music, we're creating tools that enhance, that support uh, caring for ourselves and caring for children because they're both and, right? right. And we need to model that, yeah. Right, and um, was, um, someone from WOW, one of the WOW Kids schools said listening. This is the thing each child expects, and that is the first step to enter his or her world. And Holly has put up, uh, in response to the research I talked about, uh, research from NAEYC, a doctor, this is interesting. So if a doctor gives three minutes of direct listening to a client, I love how now they're starting to refer to patients as clients. I'm sure Holly, you have a thought on that one too, but that doctor lowers his or her likelihood of being sued significantly. Wow. And this is a study that was done in the Netherlands. So just paying attention to somebody yeah. makes such a big difference. You feel heard, you feel better. I love, yes, I love these comments and listening, amen, listening. And so part of what we do with, and I love that that was shared. Thank you from WOW Kids for sharing that. And we are aligned so strongly in that. Uh, the first step of lit of friendship is listening, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, and I believe that that means listening to yourself and listening to others. It's both and listening to your tummy, listening to your heart, listening to them. Um, and so we actually have a skill builder. And that's one of the things I'm excited about is we're combining both skills with just open exploration experiences. But we have a skill builder where kids pair off and they practice listening to each other. Because it can be hard to control yourself if somebody, I interrupt people all the time. I'm still working on something. Well, I never interrupt. Oh, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I get real excited and, you know. <laughs> We, yeah. Case in point. 
Right. So right. listening, beautiful. It's so true. Yeah. Well, we're we're getting kind of close here to our ending time. And um I would not want to end without your letting people know how do they get involved with I am for you? Um, mm -hmm. either as a supporter, mm -hmm. uh a consumer of the product mm -hmm. or or a group that would like to reach out and have you. Wonderful. Well, what you can do is go to I'm for you. That's the letter I, the letter M, the number four, the letter U. I'm for you learning.com. And there's a contact button on there. And if you click that contact button, uh, that will get to us. Um, and what we're doing is we're looking for lab learning schools and pilot schools because we want to roll out a pilot uh, very soon. And we also have uh, a YouTube channel with there's some actual YouTube videos on uh, on that homepage and uh, some recent photos uh, with the NJAEYC conference of uh, fantastic educators there. So we hope you'll come and visit us. I'm sure there's some people that have been watching today that you will be hearing from. Kathleen, again, Dr. Friend, our listening muscles seem to be getting very out of shape from living in such a distracted world. Boy, I could talk for an hour about that and I couldn't agree more. And I think one of the problems um, is that kids, uh, we are so overstimulated now visually mm -hmm. and with watching TV and the videos that are just every, I, I almost can't watch TV anymore because every 10th of a second, there's a new image that's that's just, slicing my brain up <laughs> you know it's just that ability to sit and relax and uh uh thank you atul thank you for being here with us i'm honored that you're joining us um and uh send you blessings and i couldn't agree more our listening muscles what a great way to put it and you just interrupted yourself that was good yeah i do that a lot too <laughs> There's well, there's so many ideas back there that they're all waiting their turn, like kids at I a mean, fence. Oh, I get it. I mean, if when I was younger, they were um, identifying ADHD, I think I would have been first in line. Um, and I'm so glad that they didn't have medications back then because all this creativity that is constantly swirling would have been subdued. Um, and we need that creativity. We need to help children as we call this talk, feel comfortable about who they are, know that they are an individual. And the last, you know, one of the closing points is that individuality. Mm -hmm. They don't, and so many children feel like in order to be loved, they have to be one of the group. And that's one of the things that I love that I am for you is focus on the individuality. Yeah. You can be you, and still part of the group and still loved. Um, so Kathleen, I look forward to going to your website. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here this wow. morning. And Atul, we're truly honored by your presence and your valuable thoughts today. Mm -hmm. And Atul, we talked about that. Um, I told him about all the wow schools and um, Jim um, and you should maybe talk about you guys being the pilot in India. Um, I just volunteered you at all. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, individuality, uh, closing comments on what that means for children to understand individuality. Well, uh, it's significant what you said, Mayor, and, and, and I look so forward to being in touch with, with any and all who have been here this morning. Thank you for your work in education and your dedication to helping kids. It's, it's with, this is an all hands on deck situation. We all need to work together. All voices are needed in that. Uh, our alignment is stunning. What you said, Mayor, uh, is is one of the, the greatest gifts, I think, that we can give anybody is that you get to be yourself and you get to belong. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that's that's that. Say that again, Jim. Say that again. You get to be yourself and you get to belong. We want you here as you are, period. Look at the world we live in and look at the healing that can happen when we simply say, you get to be yourself. In fact, we want to listen to you. What do you have to say?
That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. So um, unless there's anyone else that had, wants to chime in with something, we're going to be signing off from our um, wonderful spotlight today. I really enjoyed everything you had to say. Um, let's see. And Andrea's like, I will make a closing comment. Love I am for you and you, Jim. Life changing and life giving. What a nice thing to have someone say about you. That's, That's a big old hug. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, you mean an imaginary hug? Yeah, could you? I know we're running out of time, but I love your story. <laughs> <laughs> another time. I, I think I've told that on another broadcast. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to take that and, and go right it. ahead. Please, please yeah. share it. I love. Well, I, I just love your your story, Mayor, about going into a, a, a early childhood setting and and needing to to have physical boundaries because of you know safe social distance because of COVID and a little boy just running up to you and you taught him how to give you give a hug with smiles and eye contact and. And and he loved that. And then right afterward, he says, real hug, <laughs> and then runs up and hugs you again. So <laughs> much for social distancing uh, with the kid on the autism spectrum, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm more excited that he enjoyed hugging somebody, you know? That's what the important thing was there. Um, wow Kids Smiley Home is saying great words, great mm -hmm. words. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, and check out in January, one of our magical musical moments will be Jim performing a couple of the songs from his I Am For You learning program and showing you how you could use them. So everybody stay well, stay happy. And thanks again, Jim. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>